Welcome back to the second day of the talking machine class. And this video, we're gonna go um, through the art and design that delete or use the voice interface technology. Um, I'll start with this one. So in 1978, the speak and spell, uh, which is, is a kit toy, and it is a an educational like education toy. So basically, tell you how like the word and then um, tell you to spell it. So this is um, being reproduced again in last year in 2019 um, but with some minor change like the new screen and new keyboard but this toy um, was was proposed for uh, educate and make the like help the kids to remember how to pronounce it um, and also how to uh, spell it by typing on a keyboard 1985, this is um, my favorite character, um, Max Headroom. So here's a TV show character that look like computer generated, but he's a, a real actor. Still alive out there? Good. This is a Max 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 Hey, how you doing? Come on, sit down. What do you say to coffee? Oh, no, I'll get it. Next day I say, hi. I give him a smile and he cuts me dead. I don't know where I am with the guy. Hey, who are you talking to? What? Are you cracking up? Max. So, um, Max was portrayed by Max viewer and... He is basically he's uh he just act to be a computer and he by um, putting a lot of makeup and then use a lot of with a sharp light and shot in front of the really bright background and did a lot of post production for uh, make it look like the computer so it was a fun character and it really inspired um, a lot of people later. The next one is um. If and then, if then, installation by Ken Finn Gold. And this is a two identical heads that look alike and then they keep talking back and forth, doubting themselves. I think we are exactly alike. You roof moonlight. Is this life? Imagine being me. Do you see things clearly? How do you feel? Sometimes I feel very confused. Can I control my feelings? I feel like I exist. So this is like um, have they have a script um, that we generate, and it's not real time generated. I think it's pre script, and also is the question about like themselves like doubting back and forth, and um, this gives me the feeling of like uncanny valley that I 
like real? Are you a robot? Are you human? Am I talking to myself? Are you inside my head? Where are you? Back and forth like a loop. And to listen to listening pause at Whitney Museum by Mark Hansen and Ben Rubin. I am. I am. I'm by. I am. I'm off. I am eighteen M. I am. I'm nice. I'm twenty six. I am hot. So this show is um, using the text that uh, is real time text that happening in the unrealistic um, internet chat room, and they display it and use the computer speech synthesis to the voice synthesizer to read it or like sung sung it uh, um, on the display about like two hundred display on the wall. Next, in 2005, Golang Lawin, a sonography, he using um, real-time uh, speech to take performance and using his wife. Whom struggled with said all, begging, please. Isn't it so amazing? The things that I like about this show is also he used sort of um, like comparison between a like human, like as you can see that like from the example or the history that I show you, the computer voice like just do kind of like you can tell this is like computer voice, but he's starting with like uh, whispering and then like up and down the pitch changing. I also like the visual that um, apply to his voice really nicely. Like when he changed the pitch, like ding, and then the take was dropped down. And when he become more um, like strong and then louder, and then the text was kind of show the same emotional, which is interesting to see in the sense of um, make a petition to to show emotional. And next 2007, um, Apple Talk by Ger Laney. Um, I'm so sorry if I pronounce the name wrong. Um, it can only be attributable to human error. It can only be attributable to human error.
It can only be a change about a human ever. It can only be a change about a human ever. It can only be a change about a human ever. Now them on you. So it's going like this forever. Um, this is a uh, the fun project. So the the artist set up the two Macintosh computer and put the microphone in front of the the speakers and then making the the text to speech and then voice recognition software to talk back and forth. Um, and then it start with some question and then it looping the mistake forever. And it's interesting just to hear the machine mistake. The next one, this is in 2007, Hatsune Miku, um, the artificial singer. Avatar performers um, that create by like a company that making the software and that all his voice and uh, the sound was uh, a, synth a voice synthesis software, a voice synthesizer software, and uh, the company been marketing her like like this is a robot and this is um, your is like like. She is one of the superstar, and then they sell a ticket, the real ticket. They sell the merchandise. They sell a single, the single, and they made a real concert um, with um, portray of her, the position being of her in three D. Next, uh, I thought there was a night, uh, the cutting to a billion by C W and T or Seve and Taylor, and this machine was. Um, like a small sign and it's counting 2 billion forever I mean until the battery was die but um, I've been working with them so every time I go to the studio I still hear the counting so yeah it's really really fun project from them so and beside all the art project it's also lots of um, products or design and this is one of the really good use for um, the voice interface and the speech to text. But this is also special because it's not just speech, not just speech to text or text to speech. It's also a speech to speech. Can I have one bread, please? Can I have one bread, please? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Play cars. You are my friend. You are my friend. I love you. I love you. This app is aiming to help the user with the speech disorder and to be able to communicate. And so they use both like the speech to take and then display. So uh, the later product also doing the take to speech back. And um, I think it's really useful and really good use. And this is all one of the reasons why I'm interested in um, using voice interface for part of the artwork because one of the good point is you can make your work more inclusive to disability people. Next is in 2015, Martin Bax, uh, what do machines think of? So he made an installation that fully automated machine generate the singing voice and address the emotional to the song.
Really, really fun project. Um, so this uh, met, uh, this installation is generate real time, and then it's randomly picked to the next song, and then keep singing. And next in 2016, this piece was fun piece, um, the looping AIs. Read my note from today. Okay, I found this note. Your note from today says, Alexa, tell me about my 3 p.m. appointment. That's all. Here is the next event. Today, at 3 p.m., there's OK Google. What is in my calendar at 4 p.m.? Today, there's only one thing. It starts at 4 p.m., and the title is Hey Siri, read my note from today. Your note from today says, Alexa, tell me about my 3 p.m. appointment. Here is the next event. Today, at 3 p.m., there's OK Google. What is in my calendar at 4 p.m.? So it's been like like looping forever. This is um, a project from Itainif. Um, this is one of the class taught by Nicole He at ITP NYU. A project called Beatbot. It's been 22 long hard may help you to just rehearse. Who explained working wild for our love with that? Who explained working wild? Now I peep at what I'm kicking in the plane tickets. Zelling says, no I'm saying. And she ain't trying upstakes my head. Cool. Uh, he did the uh, a frequency that been go through um, uh, looping, and then you add the assign a word that they, you want the bot to speak, and each row assign different um, pitch. And next is the project at Culture Hub by the past residency Maxwell Lily Cohen. Uh, he did a project read to me, which is. It's like a real time spoken visually, and he created a space that um, is um, visually react to the word that being read out loud. This project was used using the Google uh, API and Unity to create a visual. Next one is the game, the voice control game by Nicole He called Enhance Dot Computer. You. Uh, the website is still available for you to play, so you can go check that out. Enhance.computer is a 2018 voice-controlled browser game made by Nicole He, playable only in Google Chrome or Google Chrome Canary. You are Detective Cyber, and you need to locate a four-letter code hidden in a photo in order to prevent a murder. After clicking Begin Investigation, you let the browser access your microphone, and then you can explore the photo by saying zoom in, zoom out, and move up, down, left, or right. Whenever the picture gets fuzzy, you say enhance. Zoom in. Move right. Enhance. The web page will take several seconds to load the first time. The four letter code is written in white letters in the same font as the words around the outside and is generally too small to be read at the normal viewing level, and can be hard to find in big variations in contrast in the image. So it is important to remain calm and communicate clearly. So yeah, this is um, the game that using wise, your wise to control. And um, so if you watch like um, detective movie that back in the day that they try to make an interface by using Y, like oh, move left, zoom in, Enhance. So this game was inspired by those movie and 
uh, Nico, he also was the part of uh, Google Experience. Um, and I recommend you to check out her another, another of her project that she made with uh, Google. Um, so you go at the go to the experiments with google.com and then in the voice experiments session is a lot of uh, project that she made with Google. The next one is uh, the project I did in 2018 and I also sort of inspired by a lot of projects that I've been mentioned to and this is a uh, the idea of create a machine that always produce a mistake and I so I make the bot that has a different characters and um, one of them has a machine learning generate so I train the bot with the opera script and it will speak like opera and then the rest would, was a ramming bot and another one is the just repeat what they were here which is always mishearing me because I have an accent and the show I also have a collaborator Jen um, who is a real uh, uh, opera singer and she tend to make it more mistake because the computer cannot hear the high pitch or the lower pitch and basically the whole show is just improvised uh, whatever is happening I just read it if Jen see the keyword from the opera she will sing the song out loud sing for me <laughs> Pretty um, chaotic show, but um, yeah, it was fun to see, um, and it's the whole time it's just me try trying so hard to collect the the what it here and um some of the sometimes it's produced like a really funny word and some situation was just like out of nowhere word because it's my niece here from the another laptops so it was why <laughs> the next one i did um is uh show at also at culture hub um le uh, recently at, uh, in 2020 in early 2020 in March and this one is supposed to be um, a physical show and um, I moved everything to online and it's become more uh, it, the name also changed from you are 99% likely to, to come to this show to to be like you are 99% likely to see this show and um, this take the same uh, idea of mishearing but it's also um, the idea of the confidence of the machine learning that it will give you the, the answer when it's thought that this is my close to 90% of matching what it just hear or just heard and I use those confidence to combine with the human as me who always had such a less confident like maybe eight percent like maybe um maybe i guess she speaks that word maybe i guess this musician play this pitch so it's such a really low confidence from the human but combine those two um confidence different confident level and then we generate the song and beside the bot that generate the text um i also create a new bot that find the phoneme like when it hear this word it will find the word that has diff uh, the similar phoneme to make a similar um, word that has the same sound um, and the graphic you see is also came from the musician at and it used the machine learning to find the pitch um, or maybe he just played this pitch and then display as a graphic score so we basically generate the graphic score together and if you want to watch the show you can go to culture hub website all right let's go so if you haven't watched um the video tutorial that i gave you 
um, we are going to use the p5.js, which is a free um, web editor online. And I would like to ask you to watch an amazing um, video by Daniel Shipman. Um, he is the one who doing the coding trend, which is like a YouTube channel that teaching you how to code. And I would recommend to start with this one, um, the programming for beginner with p5.js, which is the link is in here. I'm sorry, I'm gonna move myself out. Um, and if you have, it's just like 10 minutes or 12 minutes and really fun. He's really entertaining, really good. Um, and uh, has a really good uh, explanation how the code work, what is P5.js, and also I would encourage you if you have a little more time um, to watch the second one after that one, which is how to use the P5.js web editor. Um, it's just like seven minutes, and um, and then we we can come back and code together. And if you have some time, um, the saying um, I would uh, encourage you to watch all his video, he's great. And this is also how I learned coding too, by watching his video. So don't forget to create an account on B5JS and watch my video and see you soon.